This is great. We have an accessible world, technology, all this stuff has happened, right? But now it's about attitude, understanding, belief, and how to treat people with disabilities. And it's really simple. It's not that big a deal. Here are my three principles of disability etiquette. Number one, they're people first. We are not our disabilities. We do not define ourselves by our disabilities. If you see us primarily by our disabilities, you're missing the point. And the way I know this happens is because um, people are always saying, oh, my Aunt Gladys used a wheelchair. Or, oh, oh, I've got a cousin who's blind. Oh, he just does everything. It's so amazing. Right? Well, if the first thing out of your mouth is to talk to me about disability, it tells me that you think you have to relate to me in terms of my disability. That's not what I need from you. Right? I'd rather talk about, like, please make a contract in the NBA. <laughs> or any of a million other things that I'm interested in. I play backgammon. I bake bread. I'm a musician. You know, I've, I'm such a... We're just whole people, so start there, save the disability stories for later. The other side of it is, if that's the way people think, then how are they going to imagine that somebody with a disability, if they can't open a door for themselves, how are they going to perform in the workplace? How is it going to be expected that they're going to be able to participate and contribute in society in significant ways on par at a scale of quality and productivity as anybody else. That's where this starts to, in effect, be discriminatory against people. We need society to catch up with this idea that I am really skilled at what I do. I am an expert at how I function with my disability. Now, the one of the ways that we get stuck in this is that we think of disability in medical terms what's known as the medical model of disability. But people with disabilities are not sick. If I have an illness, I go to a doctor, I get diagnosed, I get treated, then I'm a patient, sometimes I get sick. I'm a human being, right? But my disability doesn't mean that I'm sick. Somebody who is deaf is not sick. Somebody who's blind is not sick. Somebody of short stature, somebody with facial disfigurement, somebody with um, uh, diabetes who's managing it well keeping their blood level right, right? Not sick. You know what's really sick? People who still drive Hummers. <laughs> now that is sick. Because I get asked this question all the time. 18 years old, broke your back. How in the world did you deal with that horrible darkness? No, I'm, I'm an approval seeker. It's just not my style, the way I do it. I was getting this opportunity to get all this attention. I was the third child, remember? <laughs> so all of a sudden, oddly enough, breaking my back is what made me the center of attention for the first time in my life. I would be confined to my wheelchair. That's what the media says all the time, right? Wheelchair bound. Well, the wheeling mind sees it entirely different. Walking is not an option for me. That really changes things, right? Without the wheelchair, then I would be confined. The wheelchair is the source of my mobility, the source of my life. I care about it a lot. Getting the right one, having it well configured, taking care of it, and then having an accessible world for me to function in. I am not confined to my wheelchair. I am liberated by my wheelchair. Um, I um, um, attended uh, architectural school. I have a graduate degree in architecture. So as soon as I was out of rehabilitation, I went to campus. And guess what? The building where I was about to spend most of my time was completely inaccessible. The architecture building was completely inaccessible. I had to be carried up and down steps for five years. Right? But I didn't just take it sitting down, if you will. Right? I started to campaign with the campus administration. I started writing in the school paper. I started um, uh, talking with everybody on campus about it. I, I got local news to do a couple stories of it. The whole process took five years, but I got it done. Here's my ramp at the Lawrence Tech School of Architecture in Southfield, Michigan. All right. Ah, oh, don't bother. It's too late. <laughs>
Oh, did I seem to be manipulating you for applause? <laughs> We, by definition, as human beings, are incredibly adaptive beings. Every one of us is just wired with this stuff, but we don't often know it until something puts it to the test, until something happens in our lives that makes us come up with this deeper capacity that we don't necessarily always know that we have. But I think it's unfortunate that as a society, we don't operate on this assumption because there is a lot of proof of it out there. And I think the more that people with disabilities are out and about, the proof is even more clear of this, that, wow, we're just wired to survive and to thrive. Here I am, the elder statesman, 38 years. This 4th of July will be 38 years. It's, it's amazing. And what an incredible span of time it's been. I have been witness to this just truly remarkable social transformation. It's this very specific window just at the time that I was injured that so many things began to change in such a dramatic way. The difference between what it's like to be paralyzed in the 70s and the way it is now, is, it's almost beyond description. So, as this work evolved for me, I realized that my job was to make the conversation comfortable for people because it's a topic that many people are uncomfortable with. And also to acknowledge what their um, current perspective is. So ODEP was mentioned here, the Office of Disability Employment Policy. Um, they did a study of employers and it really came up with some remarkable but not that surprising results that regardless of the size of the organization, managers reported in the 40%, mid to upper 40% ranges that they didn't expect people with disabilities had the education or the skills or were able to be productive, that they could discipline or fire them, or that they were even gonna be comfortable being around them. The, the best exercise that I get is my little juggling habit here. I actually break a sweat when I do this. Thank you. Go ahead. You can clap if you want to. It's okay. I got another one. Whoa! Sorry. Bad throw. 